approach the end of the age. A time when all will be revealed. I'm gonna kill you. Welcome to the Zep Report. How are you? Step right on in and find a clue. Greetings in the name of the Most High. Welcome to the Zeph Report. Zeph Daniel, your host. Uh, just deleted a whole bunch of pods off my device here. They, you know, once they go online, you don't need to keep them here. Uh, this thing really can't run that efficiently, but in high quality mode, you get basically a studio sounding microphone. So I'm, I'm all about the delivery process of getting you the best voice, but then quickly as possible for, for the pod to, to kind of, because it usually just captures that, that thing we're going through. And uh, this is no exception. This pod goes out to uh, all those uh, on the walk, all those on the way of uh, the two-tiered Jesus. I know it's very, very disconcerting that there are so many breaches in Christianity that it's you could drive a truck through them. I understand that, and it's... It's just part of it, you know, when you have the center of the universe being the lamb, you know, and, you know, the, the, the creator, the creator uh, and if you will, the center of creation. And someone said the other day, the, read a quote by the guy that founded AA, he goes, the creator is not a creator, he's the center of creation. He is consciousness, talking about God. But he, and I beg to differ, he's also the creator. You know, the conscious creator. The first cause, the first without a second. Uh, the prime mover, if you will. Uh, who brings order out of order himself. Who brings creation out of himself. Who is, a, who is not self-created, but uh, is um, forever existent. This God is a person that can be called on, that can help. Now, admittedly, times have been, I'd say the last, since about the Super Bowl on, things have been way off, you know, and the suicide rates have gone through the roof worldwide. It's, it's, it's something that the social planners have planned by ramping up all the you know, pressures on people, making it economically impossible, or through war-torn countries or whatever to make it impossible to have a life. Uh, people are committing suicide as fast as possible. In fact, India, in the farming communities, it, it ramped up to about 250,000 based on the GMO farming that came in that was, um, you know, destroying the uh, farming industry. And there's a movement now to, to, to get rid of it. But the, the thing that caused the alarm was the suicide rate of the farmers whose farms were being taken over by basically Monsanto. And they, they, were, they were not allowed to keep their own seeds or to, to do what they've done for, for generations and f through millennia of taking care of their farms and, and, and getting their, their produce to market. Uh, no longer were they able to do that because of the intervention of this awful, horrible, horrible company called Monsanto. And the GMO now is extending itself to humans. Well, in this dehumanization world, you know, Suicide rates are going up, not just in America, but around the world, exponentially. It's really quite um, 
unprecedented in human history, I, I, I would think. You know, it's not just um, slave employees where there's suicide nets, where they're, you know, jumping out of windows because they're so miserable making products, you know, making this um, device I'm using, for example. They're so miserable making this. They kill themselves. This thing has blood on it. Um, it it's a terrible thing. Uh, but I have been called to service on this issue. And you're just going to have to bear with me. I'm a little bit out of it because it's been... Well, I was, I was fairly traumatized by the images of the Super Bowl, even though I didn't watch it. I still was affected by it consciousness-wise. You know, the, the, the declaration of victory, and it was also a, a declaration of violence for the whole world. That's what the Super Bowl was. It was the portend of World War III and a nuclear holocaust and a holocaust in general and diseases and plagues and, 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 and ultra-violence between people of, 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 of every, every splintered group being everyone against everyone. Satan truly is reigning on this earth. And, um, you know, this is the rise of their new world order. They, they think somehow they have a utopia out of this. They will never reap anything but the whirlwind of destruction for themselves. And the reason why is because you reap what you sow. Lucifer in 2014 in the Vatican was declared God. They had a ritual there where they, they claim that Lucifer, by name, is God. And you know, is the creator and, in fact, created Jesus. And that was the little litany, the little liturgy, rather, that they were singing. In Latin, Lucifer is Lucifer, and that was very, Lucha is light. So that was very, very um, apparent. The Lucifer, the light bearer, the, the, um, the highest angel uh, that's referred to in the Bible, the son of the morning, is also revealed as Satan, the serpent, that old dragon, Satan. And um, so the Vatican in that ritual, there's a veneration of some saints, I'm not sure exactly who, you know, prior popes, uh, they, they put it out in plain sight that, well, I don't, you know, me, I don't need them to say Lucifer in their in their liturgy and their ritual to understand. All I have to do is go to St. Peter's Basilica and I'm, all I have to do is see the, the obelisk and I know who they worship. I don't need any more than that. I, did, I don't need, I just, all I need to do is look at their architecture and look at their costumes, which is that, that's what they are to me, costumes, ridiculous, clown outfits. And that's, that's all I have to do. And then I'm, then I understand. The Catholic Church worships Satan, but they always have from day one. And upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus did not mean a literal physical building with people walking around, you know, in their, in their outfits and their pomp and circumstance and their um, satanic rituals disguised and their magical rituals disguised as rituals under the Lord. Now, I don't recognize any of the Mass as being under the Lord at all. I see Catholics doing good work, but the problem is, is the fish, Dagon, right, with a Dagon hat, rots from the head down. Well, right now what the Vatican is doing, and the reason I'm mentioning it, because it all ties in, is what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring all the world's religions under one roof. Whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, doesn't matter what it is, all of them under one roof. And we know that's what, that's the hallmark of the New World Order. I've been writing about this for, I don't know, way over a decade now. Of, um, and I wrote about it in my book, Lamb. I have the one, you actually get to see what it would look like. To see these people from all these different religions you know, holding hands and doing the kumbaya thing on the stage. 
it's quite revealing. It's quite it's quite extraordinary. Um, but it is the 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 satanic. I could just cut to the chase and forget about what men write because men are fallible. But we can go right to what Satan is all about. What the demons write because they write through people. And what their plan is basically is is obviously they're going forward with their the entire thing is masonry by the way so it's you know the, the, it's all about these higher degrees of masonry and and um, following the Albert Pike plan which has been tabled by the way by the ultimate powers that be I guess those are the angelic hosts who are saying if you continue with this there will be nothing left of you and they and they say well that's fine with me See, Obama wins no matter what he does. Now, there's a number of people who believe Obama is the Antichrist. And um, there's a good deal of evidence to support that. His own people believe that, and the entire Congress believes that, and the Supreme Court believes that, and people that are initiated into higher levels and adepts and higher levels of, of the occult, which would be just about all of Congress and all the president and all the judges and just about everybody that's elite in our society, would have be indoctrinated and initiated in those high levels. Uh, they believe it. They don't come right out and say it. I mean, you know, Oprah believed it and then she didn't, but now she's starting to believe again. Because they're looking at the results on the ground, total chaos. And they believe they can bring order out of the chaos that they're creating. You know, the, the migrant thing is simply the invasion of Europe and the invasion of the United States, but for the gun owners. So that's been a big problem because these people would be shot in, in droves if they tried raping your daughters or your, or your boys or, your, or your, you know, stealing from you or doing whatever they do. Um, an armed society is a polite society and that would be taken care of. But I do wonder where the... You know, I mean, the John Wayne riding in on the military tanks to rescue America from the uh, infiltrators. The problem that you have is all the alphabet soup agencies are behind the infiltrators because they're infiltrators as well. And so you, 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 it's a very tough thing because they made sure to conquer everything. The Pentagon, the FBI, the CIA, the, the, the NSA, all beholden unto Lucifer, all beholden unto the satanic planned to bring about this revolution and bring about this order out of chaos and bring about this new world order society, but not until there's a, a bloodbath and much pain and eradic eradication of the wrong kinds of people from the earth to make it a, a, a world beholden to Satan only with every single person being completely dedicated and initiated and indoctrinated and having gone through the break on through to the other side business so that it's irrevocable, so they can't ever get back to God. So that's one entire world of twice dead people. In other words, a, a realm of the dead. It would be then officially called Hades, not a new world order, but Hades. I don't think many people understand that. Some of you have figured out that, you know, you, you figured... It seems like the realm of the dead now. Yes, indeed. Now, you know, I would say those of you who have those kinds of thoughts, you're really on to something. It's a very difficult path to pursue because you're not going to find many people that are in agreement with you. But I have often had those thoughts about having been, you know, dead and then, and then coming to this realm of the dead, you know, this, this nightmare realm where it seems that dreams are the things that we live in and they can be quite horrific. Certainly in the last few days, beloved brethren, the last few days have been completely just about impossible from the point of view of, uh, if you like, I, I just call it the, the suicide beam. And it just means that the weaker of our society, you know, the weaker of us, will commit suicide because they're being beamed with ELF waves and things like that en masse across the entire world um, constantly. And the suicide rates are increasing due to the social engineering as well that people don't believe they have a future here. So they're killing themselves. And this is all by design. 
That's why I say don't kill yourself because you're just giving them what they want. You know, they're psyching you out, but the, the, their, their psychological warfare that they're, 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 they're exacting on us, that would be your Congress, your president, your UN, your, you know, your, your, your elite of the world, your secret societies. Uh, these are, have the weapons and they turn them on their own people. So look no further. Your Bill Gates is your, you know, look no further to that. Bill and Melinda Gates, probably the most evil couple alive on the earth today. They get a free pass to walk around. They're completely protected. What is that? Well, that, my friend, is a world that I don't recognize as, you know, it's, it's completely backwards from reality. It, it, in other words, the, the criminals walk around with, with impunity. This is, a, this is a man, this is a couple that wants to eradicate most of the population from the world and the rest of them mind control. And Melinda's involved more in the social engineering mind control end, end of things. In other words, the kinds of movies that come out from Hollywood that shape people's views. That's what, you know, the Jane Fonda, you know, kind of meme from so many years ago. That's what she's involved in. Movies are a big part of her... Uh, she, she, well, because I take I still look at the Hollywood Reporter. Trish wants to get rid of it now. I'm I'm kind of like you know I just took a look at it again, and you know you see Melinda Gates appearing at all these Hollywood parties. I just saw a picture of her with with Sean Penn, and I just thought perfect two peas in a pod. They're excellent, Dumb and Dumber. You know, yes, she's stupid. Uh, agreed. We all know she's stupid, but but the stupidity with a purpose. Because obviously they're all stupid or they wouldn't do, the Vatican is stupid then, or they wouldn't do what they're doing. They fully expect Satan to rule and reign here. That's why they're breaking out the Lucifer now and just getting it going. And um, these people have way far advanced in all their plans. And like I say, it's a global, a global thing. And um, the patriot community has not opposed it, um, has not impeded it. I mean... They, they feel that they've slowed it down a little bit. I suppose there's an awareness going on amongst, but about 90 some odd people are asleep. I mean, it's, it's not like you have 30% awake or 50 or whatever. It's, it's not like that. You have a small percentage awake. And the rest of them have their heads in the sand because they took the, you know, they, 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 they fed at the trough. You know, they took the money. They took the deal. Most Americans did. And this is the result that you get. A gen the next generation completely lost. A lost generation with no hope and no future as their parents had. But you see, what their parents did in selling out killed their children. And the Lord wants to make that very clear to them, that there is a cost, that it's not just a free ride. In fact, nothing is for free. Look at all these idiots flocking to Bernie Sanders. They think he's going to—he's the sugar daddy, going to give out all the free goodies. Um, no, it's—it's it's, it, the only thing that he would do is he would bring tyranny uh, of the highest order and property confiscation and everything else of the highest order for his new world order uh, people who are all billionaires. He works for the billionaires. He works for the trillionaires. He works for them. He is their boy. They, want, they would love to bring about global communism for all the, the poor, stupid people and have so the elite go free with their... Um, Bill Gates has called. I mean, one of the evilest people that's walking around with impunity. Uh, amazing. In my world, he couldn't be, be walking around. He'd be in jail. <laughs> you know, or, or, or he wouldn't be around. <laughs> just put it that way. There is just no way. There is no way. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say about Bill Gates is he, he has called for global socialism immediately. You know, exactly what the Bolshevik thing was all about. He's called for the same evil thing immediately. And uh, you know, if, if the human race is to survive, that's how stupid this man is, but so dangerous. Well, it's amazing that I actually knew him as a child. I mean, that's weird how we were in the same school. But I guess we both grew differently. <laughs> I 
I guess we both kind of went opposite directions. You know, I ended up dropping out of there, and he went on, and and he's, from what I understand, a big donor. <laughs> yeah, they got everything, best football uniforms, and they're not hurting for anything with the donor base they've got. That means he, prog he embraced the progressive evolution of the school because it had been conservative and God-fearing and all that and, and, you know, kind of a military school. And then it, this progressive thing came in throughout the military and made everything voluntary and did kind of like a common core thing. And uh, to, in my way of thinking, ruined the, uh, any notion of a classical education. It became a social engineering school, it became a, um, you know, a, a social adaptation school of how to play the game and how to be successful and, you know, how to make, you know, the money, how to get in the secret society, how to, how to become indoctrinated, how to, uh, how to become one of them, you know, to emulate them so that you too can be a great success. It's, it's, it's a shameful, horrible thing. I oftentimes wish I could reach out. I mean, I'm reaching out to myself at 17 years old, at 16, but I wish I could reach out to my peers in some way because I know for a fact they are all lost. I mean, maybe Gates isn't, but most of them are completely lost and they're wondering, they're almost on the verge of saying, oh my God, what have I done? Like the great movie Bridge on the River Kwai when they built the bridge, but it was for the enemy, but, but it gave them all self-esteem and hope that they were building something, that the men were cooperating, that they weren't just, you know, uh, wasting away in, in, in Burma, you know. They were building <clears throat> a bridge, a beautiful bridge, and the, the, the men felt like they had a sense of purpose again and morale, only to at long last realize that bridge was for enemy troops to come kill their own. And, of course, when um, Alec Guinness had this, the actor, he had this revelation at the end. He goes, oh, my God, what have I done? As he hears the, the train coming and the troops coming and the trucks coming. You know, or not a train. I don't think it was a train. I don't think it was trucks. I don't think it was a railroad. I think it was trucks coming to pass over the bridge. Military trucks, the enemy, coming to kill their own brethren out in the field. He says, oh, my God, what have I done? And he rigged it to explode. And they're shooting at him, trying to get him to, to you know, you know, because they, they realized what he was going to do. And he was right by the detonator, and then he just falls on it and blows the bridge up and all the uh, military trucks with it. But he had that revelation as, oh, my God, what have I done? Now, the reason the movie is great is because it is an allegory. I know that you never had this education in school before, but... Um, an allegory is a story that is a, a moral story, and there's a moral to the story <clears throat> about our world today. And um, they, they, it can be about anything. It could be a historical story, like, a, like World War II. It can be a, a futuristic sci-fi story. Most sci-fi stories are allegories. You know, for example, They Live is an allegory of our world right now uh, from John Carpenter. Um, so the idea of allegory is very helpful because people need allegories. Jesus taught in parables, but also allegories. You know, it's 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 um, an allegory. It's like it's 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 like it 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 basically reveals to you in a mythological way, and in a way that feeds your DNA actually, um, who you are and what your world is and what the lesson is. Which, in this case. They're telling a story of the fallen humanity that we sell out uh, in order to have a job and have self-esteem only to realize at long last, as we get older, that by God we sold out to the enemy, the enemy of humanity, just to make it easier on ourselves. And now, my God, look at the price we have to pay. And the price is this lost generation I've been talking about, you see. There are consequences to selling out.
Yes, I understand you have a job. Yes, I understand you get to build the bridge. Yes, I understand that gives you self-esteem. Yes, I understand you get to be a man before your wife and your kids, a, a provider. Yes, I understand all those things that corruption brings. Yes, I understand that it would have been impossible to make it without the corruption. Yes, your friend here, I understand it all. At the same time, when you look at the world, especially the suicide rates today, we have, because we, the majority of us have done this, we are reaping now what we have sown. I don't know how to put it in any more sober terms than, and, and clear terms than that. You cannot listen to this podcast and walk away saying, I did the right thing. You just can't do it. You just can't do it unless you want to just rip your heart out and say everything is garbage. Unless you want to demean your life to, to the point of, of, um, of insignificance. In other words, that perhaps you should not ought to have ever been born. I mean, and those feelings, ladies and gentlemen, lead also to suicide. Because these people that did sell out, they don't have a job anymore. And there are no prospects to them getting one. It, it, the gravy train dried up, ran out of gas. Oh, something happened, and the ISIS blew the tracks up. It's, there is no future for your children. And they love you to commit suicide because, after all, you committing suicide worldwide and en masse is going to lower the population rate and, you know, they're, they're doing this suicide beams on you to eradicate the weaker of our society. And they know that's going to happen. They are, they've already predicted the numbers. This is all by design. This is all scientific. And it's all going forward. Don't you be a victim of it. Now, the last few days have been the most bummer-rammer, bummer-bummer, bummer-rummer of all, pretty much of the last few years. I don't, can't recall a week worse than the post-Super Bowl week. Don't care what you don't look at the, you know, whether it's the, the collapsing stock market, the increasing specter of World War III, which, which is a, a, a nuclear holocaust, um, because increasingly I told you that, you know, Syria, you know, we've had also Canada here and we've talked about Syria being a flashback. We knew eventually it would be. And the timing wasn't there yet, but... Uh, Russia is now warning of uh, um, World War Three or, or Four, whatever, however you want to look at it. If you look, like the Cold War as being World War Three, then this would be World War Four. Um, and they want to bring it about because, you know, they've done the invasion of Europe. They're trying to do the invasion of America. They're doing it surreptitiously. The people that you trust to pay their paychecks are the ones who have the knife in your back. I think you now understand that. It's not about Republicans or Democrats or anything else. It's about this thing. This, it's about Satan. Without understanding who Jesus is, without understanding what the Bible is, you cannot possibly comprehend this world right now. Because everything they do, my friends, is motivated completely, utterly uh, from the Bible. A hundred percent. The war against God is the war against the God of the Bible. You know, every institution is against God. You know, the Vatican is against God. Um, you know, you, you must understand that you know, the Protestant church is against God. The, um, the evangelical church, all the ones I went to, they were all against God, every one of them. I, I, uncanny. I, I looked, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Well, they don't believe they're against God. As the Bible says to us very clearly, and, 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 and I think it's 1 John, that, that th they will kill you thinking they do God's service. That, in other words, they'll kill the lambs of God, the sons and daughters of the Most High, the church as well, believing that they're actually doing God a good service. They're actually doing godly work. I kid you not. But um, show me a church where a lamb is welcome. Show me a church where Jesus Christ is welcome. Show me a church where Elijah would be welcome. You won't find one. You won't find one. 
I'm not talking about underground fellowships like in China and, and the United States and other places where people get together and read the Bible and, and you know, pray. And, and, you know, they're just, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the official system. You won't find even one. I mean, not, not one or two. You won't find one. We might as well just get to the, the truth and get to the chase here. I mean, that's what you pay me the big bucks for, right? I want to thank all of you who had, you know, really nice things about my foot back when, oh, very scary, how I just woke up one morning and couldn't walk, and then you couldn't touch my foot because it was in such pain. And, uh, you know, some of you sent things and all that. A very, very hearty thanks to you. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, thank you for your prayers. I covet your prayers because, obviously, this thing went away the same way it came in, just mysteriously. Suddenly it was gone. I don't understand it. Nobody does. We ch <laughs> chalk it up to witchcraft is what I do. Because witchcraft, you see, it can make you like you have a broken arm, even. And then, and then you know, you have every symptom of it, and then it just kind of goes away. Uh, that's famous in witchcraft, that sort of thing. So that's what we all, some of, uh, some of the experts are, are, are verifying that. And I'm like, yeah, well, that was a pretty heavy week, and uh, all hell broke loose. And, you know, it never really has recovered since that week. In terms of the all hell breaking loose, what I've noticed is that all hell is broken loose for everybody worldwide. It wasn't just me. It's, it's this whole global thing that's going on. And it is awful. You don't hear much about Obama defending his economy as the economy collapses because, see, on the, he wins if it collapses. He wins if it goes up. He wins if it goes down. He has over half the people unemployed, so they're all saying depression. The other half employed, so they're all saying, uh, you know, um, uh, prosperity. I mean, it, there's never been that in the history of this country. Nothing like that. Um, <clears throat> well, in the Great Depression, it was like it was, you know, there, there wasn't a group of people saying hallelujah. You know, now we have... Half the people saying hallelujah, half the people, you know, committing suicide. Feeling like there's no hope and no future and no life. And I understand that very well. Um, the reason I'm mentioning all this about the suicide rate is because I felt the, the, the weapons on me the last couple days. Now they're very powerful. I couldn't do anything. I, all I could do is I could go to bed. I was moping around. I, I couldn't get into gear. I couldn't, you know, I, I was working on another DCP track where um, on this one, uh, Richard laid down some guitar parts and, and he, he usually has a drum thing that I end up replacing, you know, or, or sometimes working with, depending. But he had to, in this case, I had to replace it. So yesterday I, I um, so I basically play the drums. And uh, I really got into it. It's got, it's, it's, you know, I think I really captured the, the, the vibe and the feeling of the song. So I laid down the drum, tracked the drums yesterday. And, um, and then there's a bass. There's a, he has a synth bass in there, but then there's a need for the bass guitar to be where that synth bass is and, and even riffing with it. And it's hard. It's, somehow it wasn't gelling, and I just I couldn't go on with it. I... I couldn't track. Usually I track one thing at a time, though. If I track the drums, I'd call that a day. And then now I have to track bass. So actually, I'm doing more work than him. It's not fair. <laughs> but I've got to track bass, and then we'll see about vocals. You know, then we'll see. It'd be a great song for vocals, but I'm, you know, whether it's going to be Trish or whether it's going to be, you know, we're not sure how that's going to work, but uh, it's, it's a really good, you know, again, just a great groove, a really good... Uh, has a lot of potential right now. But it requires me to be energized in there and, and stoked, you know what I mean? And to plug my bass into the amp and, and into the pedal board and, uh, you know, make sure the mic is right and then you mic it into, a, you know, the, the channel strip and then into the Pro Tools session and, and you know, and it just, I just got to be into it, you know what I mean? I've, I rehearsed yesterday and I got to where I understood exactly kind of what was going on, but there are certain chords that he's hitting that I need to be on the right note on those chords, you know, like ding, 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 very precise. There's no room for goofing around. So I didn't get that far. And uh, 
I'm thinking now I need a different, you know, probably I'm going to go with a, the P bass. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to go with, but I need something. You know, I'm just not sure yet. I was using the, my, this, I found a Gibson 2014 EB4 bass that was made for two years, like I said, discontinued. And that thing's got monster pick. It's like a monster rock and roll bass. It's just got a huge sound, you know, just insane sound. And I'm thinking maybe I need something a little more tame. I'm not sure. Whatever it's going to be, uh, you know, right now, I couldn't do it yesterday. You know, usually I, you know, the drums, and I, and I edit the drums. I work on, you know, I, I create a MIDI file, and then I change out the snare, and then I might go with a different cymbal, I might go with a different kick drum, and I keep messing around with it, trying to get the right sound, you know. So it's, it's a very involved process, the drums. So maybe that was it. I was just tired, or maybe I just, did, you know, I don't know what it is. I'm doing this podcast right now, and that's going to cut into my energy in the studio, too, and I... You know, but people tell me, well, it's okay. It's like, no, it's not okay. I got to push ahead. You can't just have 15,000 podcasts and every once in a while there's music and then, you know, people are, you know, it's all part of a flow. You know, it's not like you have one in a vacuum and then the other, you know, it's all, it's all part of this process of, of dealing with the world and dealing with things and the lyrics are always reflecting of, you know, kind of what's going on and, and it's, 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 it's all a part of it. You know, so so back to the thing. Well, just I just pray for myself that I'm able to bring it when I get in there. You know, that that uh, there's a challenge there, and I need to just you know take it one step at a time. Well, if we all do our part right, then it, it should be a you know great track. Well, I mean, we have had a lot of great tracks over especially lately, from a mixed standpoint, from, from every which way you want to look at it. We've had a lot of terrific tracks and great mixes, and uh, even if I do say so myself, and uh, people say, where's that going? So they've always said, well, where's that going? Well, where do you think it's going? It's going out on the airwaves for, for, for no money, for, for, just like the podcast is, just as, as a service to humanity. You know, there, there's, there's no commercial value in the labor that we produce. We are not being paid for our labor. We're not even getting, you know, I'm not taking donations, but I mean, we're not even passing the hat for our labor. We're not, we're, we're getting, you know, nothing for our efforts and certainly not many people interested. So we must find a way to push on because I know the talent's there. <laughs> I know, the, I know, the, I know the, 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 the subject matter is there. I know the spirit is there. And that I cannot say about most commercial music today. It's, 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 it, it all has a kind of a quality of being, you know, not everything, but I mean a lot of things just kind of like phoned in because it feels good and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's okay. It's just, it's just part of pop culture, but this is not that. And um, so we're going to keep on uh, going. As the Lord says, that's the most important thing. And then we do podcasting on the side. But we can't crack out a, a song overnight. Like I said, yesterday was drum tracking. You know, now today I have to lay down a bass line. Hopefully I'm, I'm with it today. Then I got to figure out what we're going to do with the lyrics and all that. That's on this side. Rich has done his part. And... Um, then there has to be a mix down and a mastering and all that. Not, not something you just whip out in a day. I, I have things I whip out in a day, but that's different. This is, this is that crafted thing. This is no different than in any studio, or whatever. They have people come in, they lay down vocals, they come in with a bass line, they come in and do some drums, whatever, and the producers have to kind of organize it all. Is it fun? Um, well, it can be, you know, if, if it's a good job and, you know, everyone worked hard and got, it, got, got their, th their end of it done and, and then it all came together and then you're, you know, sharing it with people, yeah, that can be fun. 
but it's also coupled with the idea that most of the world will never hear it. And so there's that bittersweet thing, that sorrow and elation kind of blended together. It's never like, wow, high five, you know, we did it. We, we, you know, if you want to do that, you got to break on through the other side. You got to serve Satan if you want that other kind of thing, if you want the world to love you. Let me just put it in no uncertain terms. If you want the world to love you, you're going to have to bow down to Satan. Oh, it'll be in the form of another person or slavery or secret something. It won't be out in public. You're covered, dude. But, you know, you, you can become a mason. You could do a lot of things, you know, to try to schmooze and, and get your way in there. But you're going to have to get your way in there socially. Or it's, it's never going to happen. And make sure you're 16. Yeah, 25 is over the hill. <laughs> no, isn't that, it's amazing. They're looking for the next Justin Bieber already. And finding lots of them. You know, it's which one's going to pop through. But all of this is part of a, you know, that this, to me, this is not what it's about, you know. Now, now interestingly enough, when I, we put tracks out there, I hear from people around the world. And in the beginning, I had, you know, DJs, you know, replaying me in, in Jerusalem and, and Tel Aviv in, you know, uh, Eastern Europe, um, Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Asia, just all over the place. It was, it was, it was awesome. It was, but that was a different thing. That lasted a couple of years and then that, that dried up when, when, the, when everything changed to streaming and everything, those days were over. But I enjoyed that, you know, and then, and then back then there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of plays, it would seem, from that, from, from, from all that, you know, there was a, there was a, almost looked like a possibility of, 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 of you know, something happening with the music, but, but no, it wasn't meant to be. Now it's really about craft for me. It's really about um, quality, whether it be the mix, the sonic quality. I mean, I'll spend, you know, hours on the kick drum, for example, or on the snare. I, I want it all to be the top, top quality. And then it's about content, you know, first, obviously, about capturing that lightning and you know, getting something if you got something that you can feel it. And then it doesn't matter what it does. The Lord puts it out there and gets it to people that you, 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 far and wide. I do hear from people around the world. And we do know that we do have a dedicated bunch of people that just really want the music and they don't want the talk. I know that sounds weird to you, but they really don't want the talk. They feel that it's all said in the music. And it is in a much more crystallized form. But again, it takes, what, a week or more to put together a track when you're doing it in a very conscientious way, but it's flowing. And if it takes longer than that, then something's wrong. But I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, just, it's not something that um, you could just have like a, like a podcast on demand. You know, just every day, every time something's going on, you have it. I'm doing this today because I'm led to by God who I talk to, Yahweh, the one, the ultimate, the, the creator. And it's about this, what's going on with, with this, because it's affecting me too <clears throat> in, um, in being able to produce music. It's, it's effect, even though I've done some of my best work lately, it's still affecting my ability. It, it's affecting my mood. It's, it's clouding my judgment. It's, 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 it's in the way between me and the actual session. It's, um, it's, it's, it's turning a beautiful day into a nightmare. And um, this is happening with my friends as well. And they're reporting the same thing. So I, I feel that we have a phenomenon on our hands and I believe it is scientific. And I'm really sorry. I told you a while back that gang stalking, electronic harassment has gone mainstream, you know, it's, it's, it's ma it affects the masses. It's not just the one, you targeted individuals are gonna feel a little bit left out because, the, you know, thank you very much for your service, it's now worldwide, affecting every single human being on earth. Not just the few, sure, the ones who are sensitive 
can say they're being targeted, but the guy next door is too. And the ones who are more sensitive are the ones who are being eradicated from our society, who are dying, doing the dying right now. Oh. Well, I don't think it would do me any good to tell you this, that, but I'll tell you that these, these are the people that should live. The more sensitive, the better among us. The more gifted in many ways. And we're killing them in droves. Make no mistake, these suicides are not counted by the Lord as suicide. They're counted as murder. Once again, these suicides around the world, as they have increased ridiculously, are not being looked at as suicides by the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh Elohim, the one. Yahuwah, Yahusha, whatever, as one. I don't care whatever name you want to call God, but, you know, there's a thing about if you commit suicide, you go to hell. That's in the Catholic Lucifer worshiping church. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Uh, uh, doctrines of men. No, the Lord's telling me right now before you as I stand before all humanity, I am not lying. He is telling me right now that it's looked at as murder and not as suicide today. So you can rest assured if people committed suicide that you know, you don't have to worry about them going to hell. They're not. They're going home. My God, how cruel is it that, you know, it's like, it's like we're killing you and then if, you, if we shoot you full of bullets and you die, we're going to call that a suicide and ruin your afterlife or whatever. Forget about it. Anyway, there's no such thing as afterlife. There's just life. Life does not end when you give up the... the uh, the, the little flesh suit they give you, you know? That's, that's just part of a process. Anyway, for those who are very moralistic, you know, or legalistic and, and moralizing about the Bible and different things, um, the people committing suicide today, as I said, are murder victims. They're being murdered by a cruel society that has taken away all hope and all vision, that has taken away all um, human decency and replaced it with perversion, lies, you know, prevarication, you know, you know, situational ethics, racism, race wars, economic wars, class warfare, every man against every man, total chaos. And many people aren't able to handle that and they're committing suicide as a result. And then there's the, the aid and help of scientific uh, weaponry, um, which is less of a factor, actually. But, I mean, it's still a factor. So that's what's going on. It is not counted by the Lord as a uh, suicide, interestingly enough. I mean, just to show you how bad the times are we're in, to have the Lord say that doesn't count as suicide anymore. That gives you a little glimpse into just how bad things are. And gets me to think that perhaps we are close to the conclusion of this, this, little, this end chapter and to the return of the Lord and whatever that means. And to the new, I know what it means. It means a new heaven and a new earth. It means a lot of things like that, you know. Some people say a thousand year rain. Other people say a thousand points of light. Others say a thousand year Reich because Lucifer is the one coming to rule and reign for a thousand years, not Jesus. And they read the Bible as coded that, that way. Their interpretation is when it says Jesus rules a thousand years, they think Lucifer rules a thousand years. When they see the plagues and everything from the, 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 for the writers of the apocalypse, they see themselves in exacting all the death and destruction on people. But make no mistake, they use no other book. There is no other narrative that they use. There is no other person that they oppose other than Jesus, the Lamb. That's who they're truly afraid of, and that's the only one they're afraid of, of any name or any concept that you have. Or whatever God is, that's, that's the one that they cannot stand. That's the one that makes them... Uh, that actually defines them as entities. 
Can't call them human beings anymore now. Whatever made them human, they have lost that a long time ago. Bill Gates says, we need socialism for everyone immediately to save the world. What does he plan to do? He plans to continue to depopulate. He, he plans to remain a, a, a trillionaire. He plans to subject all of humanity to his, to his whims. He can call Obama up and tell him what to do. And, um, you know, it was an experiment. I think James Comey being in the FBI was an experiment. I mean, I know I had my hopes up, but now I see what's happened, and I, I feel very sorry for the, you know, the, there are good men and good women in, in government and other places, but, you know, you've all been overrun, you see. You know, you may be good people, but there's not much you can do. You know, Satan has taken over. And this is what Satanism looks like when it manifests. When you have the preponderance of your leaders as Satanist, you can expect totalitarianism, authoritarianism, economic debacle, poverty, and, 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 and endless human suffering to come in. That's why I shy away from socialists, communists, and the rest of them, because I don't want to see that kind of carnage. I don't want to see this kind of genocide. I don't want to see invading armies brought in and acting like they didn't do anything wrong while they're killing you. I don't want to see that kind of thing because that comes from Satanists. That's the manifestation of a world that they create based on what's inside of them, which is Satan, which is the demonic realm, which is the demonic kingdom. Name your demon. They have each person in Satanism, which is... Um, doesn't need to be practiced in a, it's practiced in churches, it's practiced in government, it's practiced at the Supreme Court, it's, it doesn't need a, a, a grove or a sequestered place. I mean, all the witches do all their, 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 their stuff there, and you know, they're, they're trying to now elect the mega witch. Hillary, she's a mega witch. Uh, they, but that would be the crowning jewel of the whore of Babylon. That would be the, the whole thing. And that would then give, then she's the, the w witch queen mother that would give birth to the, to the, to the one who would rule and reign. Maybe it's Obama going off into the UN and to, uh, but it would have to set around Jerusalem. I do believe that, that you can't really get out of that part of the Bible prophecy. Jerusalem is the crown jewel of the world. No matter what religion you are, whether you're Is Islamic or Christian or Jew it's um, the center of everything, including uh, Asia and the Hindus and the, and the Buddhists and all that. It's, it's the center of everything. It's not the center of the Western world. It's the center of the world. It's the, um, the mythical mountain, you know, Simero. It's the Axis Bundi. It's the, um, what, whatever, what do you want me to say about it? It's not to be ignored as some sort of Rothschild invention or reinvention or reboot. That's, that's, you know, Rothschild, if that's the case, then I would say God used him to uh, do what, he, what God wanted. You know, your argument is shut down. <clears throat> so many people just have de tried to deball God, you know. It's like you don't realize that he's running the show. You've got to go to him for redress now. You want to get out of being suicidal and feeling really lousy? I know, very depressed, hopeless, sick, tired, depressed, you know. Then recognize that God is the, the source of all things and that he is the source of all things when it comes to running everything, the things you don't like, the... the, the 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 um, the ISIS the uh, the migrant um, you know uh, soldiers as stealth refugees, uh, which is a lie, um, being brought in <clears throat> to overthrow uh, Europe and to overthrow the Western world, so that in the end they will come in and clean it up, and you know, the, you know it's kind of like a three tiered plan. You know, you have this part of it, and then you got the World War part of it, and then you got the cleanup part of it. 
and then you've got the you know the mass internment of the wrong kinds of people, and people that aren't going to go through the, uh, the, 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 the to the other side to become slaves, which is what they all are. And that's what they are today. When you look at your leaders, they're slaves. You don't have any leaders today that are not slaves. Do you know that? You don't have any. You got one, Donald Trump. He's not a slave. He's How he survived, I don't know. Oh, he's uh, beholden. He was, he was a liberal. He's lying. He, no, 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 no. He's, he's not doing any, any of those things. He's... Um, Basically, the reason, all you have to do is look at the reaction to him and the insanity regarding the fervency to get rid of him, and then you'll understand that they believe he's for real. So their belief, to me, would be more uh, true to the facts than your conjecture. Their belief and the way they react shows me a lot. So, you know, before you go shooting your mouth off about that, you might want to look at the uh, amazing plans they have to get rid of him. And then you realize, my God, you know, that God sent us, you know, and God will take care of him. I mean, he goes up against the entire GOP, the entire establishment, both Democrats and Republicans both hate him. And both are planning to get rid of him. And... Uh, you know, the Lord has got his sense of humor there. Lifting up the last person among us, you would think it would be lifted up by God. And they're saying, deal with it. And people go up against him and their lives are ruined. It's supernatural. And then they act like, oh, he's just secular. No, 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 it's supernatural. And, and they don't think so, so they get pummeled every time. I know, I know. Megyn Kelly got a ten million dollar book deal because it's whoop the f and do, because she she went up against Trump, because she's tough. If you buy that, if you buy that she has any value whatsoever in our society, then you're completely deluded, my friend. You are absolutely deluded, one hundred percent gone. You're like Barbara Bush, or people that watch Megyn Kelly so they think she's real. She is a sellout. To this, uh, you know, to the beast, and now she's becoming more like a man, which is which is absolutely showing me demonic, um, you know, in 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 demonic infestation, and her face is morphing, and her and her and her, you can see it. I can see, I can see the d demons on people. I don't need anyone to tell me anything. You don't need to confess to me anything. You you can see them. You know that was the that was the whole point of the Lady Gaga thing. You can see it, it didn't have anything to do with her. But my reaction was because I could see what they meant by that. And look at the stupid public. They just think, oh, look, she did a great job. Yeah, but can you look beyond the? Can you look at what what happened? Now you see what happened is she was the last point, even though at the beginning in the hypnosis of the people, so they would be taken over. In other words, it was all about the death of America, and that's how it read, and that's why Beyonce was there and other people were there. It's about the end of America, the death of America, and the beginning of the enslavement process through this faux Americana, this false sense of patriotism that she represented. It was, you know, give me somebody that sings a little off-key every time, but who's real? Thank you very much. Who am I to say? I don't need any, anyone to tell me anything about her. I just, all I have to do is look at a picture. I got it. Um, I'm not here to go dig for facts or anything else. I just, I'm riffing in the spirit. I'm in the spiritual realm. So when I see things, I report them. It's my own opinion. It's my vision. It's something I saw through a still photograph and, 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 you know, and it never changes and never will change. So help me God for the rest of my life, it'll never change. What I saw, what I perceived will turn out to be the right thing. I know it. I just know it. I know that I know that I know. No, I don't revise here. It's, it's, you, you can revise all you like, but uh, you know, let's, for the, for the, for the sake of just talking, 
It's one man's opinion. But for me, in the spiritual realm, it's, it's, for me personally, it's truth. It may not be for you. You may think that we're, we have patriotism and it was great seeing all the Americana and the American flags. It's great to see these artists who have kind of repented of their Luciferian ways and now they're saluting the flag. Uh, really? Okay, well, if you want to think that, that's fine, Pollyanna, go ahead. But that's not the way that I read it. I, I believe that she was chosen for a very specific reason. Because I see her in the hierarchy. Or the lowerarchy is really what it is. But I see her place there. They don't choose these people lightly. No, no, no. It's all uh, pre-planned way in advance. And, um, you know, she might have fooled the world, but she did not fool me, not one bit. It was a ritual they were doing, and I saw it, and I saw the effect it had on people, completely hypnotized them, and, um, you know, to where they're going, uh-huh, yeah, America, the Super Bowl, uh-huh. And they're on the, they're on the you know, they're, 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 they've been reinforced back on the path. And that goes from, you know, the commercials and the, you know, the, the outcome of, you know, Manning. Of course, anyone could have seen that you know, Denver was going to win. And then the whole hoopla of halftime and, you know, the, 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 the controversy, this fake controversy that's going on about people wanting to protest, uh, f what's her name, forgettable woman, uh, bouncy. Yeah, they want to they um, protest her doing a Black Panther salute. I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, she doesn't exist to me. I mean, it's not like something I'm going to worry about. Hey, she could have done, an, uh, you know, praise to Mickey Mouse. It wouldn't, it wouldn't affect me one way or the other. I have no room for her in my life. And, uh, or for people that are just, you know, eye candy, pop culture, you know, that whole thing. I, I'm just, give me something real, you know, give me, give me something real every time. Not something fake like her. Well, whatever the thing, and now it's popular because Obama made racism and killing people, and uh, you know you could attack if you're black, you get to you know punch out whitey or whatever, <clears throat> and that, that he's getting off on that. Yeah, of course, Satan gets off on all kinds of division. But when people are racist or they instill racism or like she's trying to be this big racist, I'm not into racism. So she's a racist. I'm not into it. At all, but yeah, uh, sure. I mean, whatever you know. There are people. There are more slaves today in the world than there ever were before, and they come from all different backgrounds. But when to keep this whole meme of the slaves and the reparations and all that, it's just like, well, we have the Indians. How about reparations there? How about the wars that went on before the Indians were here? We should give them reparations. I mean, we should. It's so absurd to me that I've I've tuned out completely because people are so freaking stupid to do these arguments. You see them on Twitter. I say shut Twitter down if they're going to go PC with the language, lingo. I say shut it down. I'm going to withdraw. Because, again, what I admire, you know, and what gets my attention is intelligence. You know, um, people that are, that, are, that are thinkers. People that conceptualize people that are grappling with all this, you know, and, and trying to keep a, a you know, sound mind about it, you know, and, and trying to figure out a solution of how to live given the fact that we know what we know. I mean, we know about a billion times more than any Beyonce will ever know. But that also, with that comes responsibility. That makes it much more difficult than it would be you know, to get through life than for her to get through her stupid life. I'm just assuming her life is filled with materialism and what kids and or people or you know just I see lots of crowds of people and lots of soci things going on and lots of you know events and lots of you know planning to take over the world and and all that typical stuff and I'm I don't have time for that. I saw plenty of that when I did my stint in Los Angeles. My God, I saw people planning on divvying up the world and they were divvying it up. One thing they all had in common, which is what all these artists have in common, they were all Satanists. They all worship the beast. They're all initiated, indoctrinated through Masonic lodges and different things. And they were, um, 
you know, all of them had gotten to the top of their occultic professions. And, um, you know, as it, and it's, it's an unfortunate world. There's a big cost for fame and fortune in that way. I mean, they, they don't get remembered as musical people. They get remembered for fame and fortune, not for their um, work. Uh, the price? Well, you know, what does Satan require? He requires um, things like blood sacrifice. He requires, you know, people dying, in other words, uh, you know, being a dedicated witch or warlock or something along those lines. Constant ritual, constant delivering of souls, and that's done in the music industry by writing lyrics and things that promote, you know, say the, the quote-unquote Illuminati and whatnot. They want to promote all that to get kids involved in it, indoctrinated, and for that they get a fortune. Well, another way of doing it would be, say, to loosen the morals of children and sexualize them and have their morals about, say, marriage and, you know, God and, you know, you know laws and things abrogated to, to where there's no laws, no morals, do what you want. So all the kids have been inculcated to do what they want by the artists. So the artists get very wealthy as a result of serving Satan so fervently and so structurally. And if <clears throat> that's why people, you people out there doing music or putting on your community theater or whatever you do in the arts, you should never feel a, a comparative toward these scumbags, you know what I mean? You should never th think, oh, gee, you know, one day Hollywood will be, you know, that's like Pollyanna. You should go back to Mulholland Drive then and look at Betty was really Diane, and watch what happened to her. Hint, she commits suicide. There's a spoiler. Uh, one of the best movies about Satanism in Hollywood ever made, you know, done very cryptically because you're not allowed to do it on the nose, but he, he got away with a lot, David Lynch. He kind of really nailed it, in my opinion. Especially the whole thing of mind. Satanism is 90% mind in mind. Satanism is all about the mind and mind control. It's all about influencing people to be doing something or thinking thoughts that they would never have thought before, but now they're finding themselves thinking them, and instead of checking themselves to figure out if those are their thoughts or not, they allow those thoughts in, and those thoughts end up dictating their decisions, and that's Satanism. That's witchcraft at its highest causing people to do something they otherwise would not do, but having them think it's normal. That is uh, the crux of the whole matter. That is the, the pinnacle of it all. Because if you can do that on mass, then you have total control. Uh, to, to have people doing things and making decisions based on things they would never do otherwise unless someone had done a targeted ritual toward them to affect their thoughts. People do that to me all the time. They send me thoughts that, 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 I'm, that I would think as if they were my own. But I have the discernment to understand, no, they're not my own. But they try to tie it in with other things so that you can't help it. And you, you know, it's a rough battle. That's called witchcraft. When you put a thought, you, you know, people say, well, I'm a remote, remote viewer. No. A remote viewer is someone that tries to plant thoughts in other people's heads remotely as if they're there, they are their own. It's a form of witchcraft. Thank you. I needn't go any further. I mean, if, if you're doing that, then you're not with the Lord Jesus Christ, period. That should always be a red flag when someone says, I'm into remote viewing. You know, I'm, I'm with the Lord, but then I'm, I also do a remote viewing. I also have a psychic thing going on, you know. Well, they say I have a psychic thing. Well, okay. I got accused of the late George Ed Hughes and, and others of, of causing them trouble, you know, remotely. And I had no idea what they were talking about. About us running bad luck. I do know that they were out, out, damn spotting me in the sense of saying, well, Look what Zeph was doing to us. They wouldn't have that thought unless they were doing something to me. 
you see. So by saying that, they outed themselves. This is when Brother Thomas got involved between the thing, and he said that they think I'm remote controlling them to having auto accidents and different things like that, and of course, and, and sickness and, and other things. I, I, I'm like, well, I'm the first to hear about it. I don't even know what you're talking about. But they thought that I, you know, yes, if people mess with me, things happen. I mean, I've heard about people rolling, you know, getting in auto accidents. I understand that. But I mean, I'm not mess. I, I'm not doing anything. I'm not. I'm. If you mess with me and then you you roll your car or whatever, then stop messing with me. Things like that happen in in the movie The Omen. I know. So the people think that. You're evil, but I'm not doing anything. You don't know, know this. I'm not doing it. I don't believe in that kind of thing. I believe the Lord has my back. You know, and I've always trusted Him with that because I've, I'm so overwhelmed with with people that are enemies of God. So many of them around me that I, they could all, you know, just take me out in a New York second. And so um, I, I have to rely on the Lord. I can't just for every single untoward thing or every single, you know person beaming me with bad vibes and suicide thoughts and everything else, I can't just stop for every single person that listens to a podcast and is offended and go to every single one and start doing mono on mono stuff. I, I, there's, there's no way to, how can you do that? It doesn't happen that way. But then they accuse you of doing things when things happen in their lives. It's funny how they would then accuse me of doing it. I said, I didn't do it, but this is another way of just having a legal hostility toward me. They go, they assume I've done it. Then, they, then they're like, so we have a right to come at you because look what you did to us. I'm like, I didn't do anything to you. If you did something to me that I don't know about and God dealt with you in some way, if it was a one-to-one -one thing, and it must have been because otherwise you wouldn't blame me, and then you justify coming harder at me again. Yes, the Lord takes people out if they're gonna, if they're gonna take you out they may end up being taken out. But I mean, I, I don't have time to look at that. I don't look behind me. I don't look and go, oh, goody, they were taken out. I don't, I don't do that. I'm more like, okay, Lord, you gave me another day of life. Thank you very much, Father. We just got to continue, get this podcast going, get up here in the middle of the night and talk about this suicidal thing, you know? But I can't, I can't worry about, I have people writing in complanatory, you know, complaining notes and, saying they don't like it when I do this or do that. And I'm like, um, then just turn it off. Well, if they make a, you know, if they want to just keep on repeating the same thing, I just, you know, I put a filter on their email and I never see them again. I don't have time to look at all that negativity. You know, I, the thing is, is it's hard enough every day to get through just one day. Like, I'm wondering if we're going to get through today. Okay. You know, if I'm going to be back in the studio or be able to do, a, you know, to, to do my work, I couldn't do it yesterday. I couldn't, you know, it's, it's terrible. I couldn't do it. Or, you know, uh, anything else that I, you know, I have, I've got other things I don't really talk about much here, but I mean, I have to be able to get up and do those too. I mean, can I do that? Well, lately the answer is no, because it's been very, very, overwhelming the feeling of this war and I get overwhelmed that's why I live you know in obscurity here out in the desert because I just really feel overwhelmed when I'm in cities because I pick up so much stuff you know and it's 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 so frightening to me and it's not frightening but it's it's so nightmarish because I'm able to see beyond the veil of the of the approved of contiguous reality that isn't real at all and the nightmare is more the real thing. And so I see that. Just like I look at a still photo of Gaga seeing the National Anthem. I know you're going to get tired of that. With the red eyelids and all. And the, and, the, and, the, and the white makeup of death, you know. And I'm just like, I, I, I'm, it's <clears throat> overwhelming. I try, you know, and I go out of my way not to look at anything. To, maybe I could just live in, a, in, in some kind of solitary confinement. Because then maybe... I wouldn't be tortured by everything I see. But then, then people come in and go, it doesn't mean that. You didn't see that. So it's like, but it, it, it traumatized me. It, it moved. Well, then that's craziness. No, it's not craziness. 
I see the I see what's there. And in time it will I will be borne out as correct. So I have to live in relative obscurity because I, like I say, I get overwhelmed by the extreme mind control of like the population completely under hypnosis. And then the horrors of what's being done to the people and being done to the world and what's happening with the suicide rates and happening with the crime and division and racial division and all this stuff that is artificial and all these things that are, that are, that are, that are part of bringing the, the human misery quotient to an all-time high, which is by design, which makes me mad, you see. Because the people keep going on as if nothing is happening to them, and they're being destroyed. And the perpetrators of this are taking glee in the degradation. In other words, the slow decline of the people. More and more pain, like, like the frog in the... In the, uh, in the boiler, taking such glee at watching when the frog realizes he's done for. I just find these people to be so cruel and so evil and so far beyond anything human. And to have to see the populations of people here worshiping these people that are killing them, I... It's a little like Ray Liotta in, uh, you know, the, the, the Hannibal Lecter thing where the Hannibal Lecter is cooking his... has his skull cap off and is taking pieces of his, of his brain and cooking them and feeding them to, 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 to the Ray Liotta character. And Ray says, oh, that's very good. You know, it's, it's like that's what's happening on a societal level. And the people on one level or out of the know it because they wouldn't be going for Bernie Sanders or some alternative like Donald Trump unless they realized, you know, they're in really deep trouble. And I hear establishment people complaining of how the GOP will be destroyed. You know, the, these people that are like establishment GOP need to realize they are the problem in this world. They, they need to shut up. They need to stop writing their articles. They need to stop um, thinking they're leaders of our society. They no longer are. They're corrupt, stupid people who think they're smart. And, um, you know, there's, oh, they're outraged at Donald Trump. They're outraged at Bernie Sanders. They're outraged that people would be rebelling. And don't they see they're going to ruin the party? It's like the party is ruined. The Democrat Republican parties are ruined. The nation is ruined. And if we ever want any hope of, of doing anything, there has to be a revolt against people posing as our own kind. For example, libertarians who aren't, constitutionalists who aren't. They rather owe their lives, their mind, their soul, their guts to society or Satan. And because of that corruption, they could never, ever, ever be trusted to, to lead us anywhere or in, in anything. And when they make their stupid comments on, on the news about how, uh, you know, um, uh, and, and about this minutia about, you know, whether Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or whatever, it, they don't realize how completely irrelevant they are. That's, that's, it's really whether they're going to put in the assigned candidate, you know, that crown the queen, or there's going to be a revolution. What's it going to be? Because I can tell you right now, if they coronate the queen, there will be um, civil war ultimately. But then it will just be the FBI going around gunning down patriots, won't it? Now what they'll do? Is it James Comey to be there to stop this? They should be going the other way, getting the communists out of there. How did it get so backwards from the original mission of the FBI? No, I'm not being an apologist for the FBI. I, I don't have any problem with the government at all because government's a reflection of the people. But is the FBI really a reflection of, is it because they, are they dealing drugs? Are they dealing in human trafficking? Are they looking at, I mean, I knew FBI agents who were into contraband. I'll just put it that way. I'm not going to go much further than that, but it's disgusting. 
well, maybe things are confiscated for evidence and maybe they sell stuff on the black market. Have you ever thought about that? Well, in the case of my friend, you know, he, that's, he would, he, they were a source of some very awful things. Uh, and these are sick people, you know, but, but yeah, they, they could take, they got lots of things they could put on the black market and sell. Would that be a temptation to become millionaire FBI agents uh, overnight? Sure, it, you bet it would. But that's what a guy like James Comey, is. he's there to clean that up. And I, he's so overwhelmed. I mean, he needs a, you know hundreds of people like him involved because it's it's he's going. He's like Mr. Smith goes to Washington. He's ha I can see he's having a very hard time. And uh, our heart goes out to him. Prayers go out to him. You know, God bless him for for being the one guy in a, in a sea of 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 just complete depravity. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't really look at it. I don't really identify with the Patriot Movement much. I, I you know, I'm too abstract for that. I, I kind of, you know, I, I realize, you know, <clears throat> there is that, you know, I, I just don't understand. I, I actually don't understand it. So that's why I'm not really counted as, I mean, I'm around patriotic type people, but I don't really, the movement, if you will, or the liberty movement or this movement or that, I don't look at it that way. I just look at it like a spiritual thing. You know, you either serve Satan or you serve God. You know what I mean? Most have gone the other way. So when I say Satan, it's kind of a moot point because it's like, yeah, most are serving the dark side because it's easier. And they learn that when they're children. So it's like, because their parents did it. You know, so that's, that's where they wind up. And then they say there's no such thing. And then eventually it comes back to bite them in the form of no economy no future, foreclosed mortgages, uh, a world gone mad, a world at war. It, it comes back on them. Their, ch their children get taken. And it's terrible. I try to warn them, but they don't listen, as you know. They do not listen, ladies and gentlemen. They don't. Well, the churches didn't do very good here for the last two or 300 years anyway, and I'll tell you however long they've been here because they encourage people to, to, to be in the world and of the world rather than in it and not of it. They don't teach Jesus, you know, what he was really saying, and they don't let people come out and become separate from the world system. They, they rather, they're there to, just like school is there, to conform the masses, to adapt to the society which is um, run by Lucifer. And the reason they do that is because they want the, their, their people to be successful. And they feel that if you go with Lucifer, you will be successful. And you can always go to church every week and, and appear to be a great person and, you know, appear to be, you know, nice with your 2.5 kids and your little turkey at every pot, your little um, tract house and whatnot and out in Northridge and, and you're, you're, you're just styling, baby, you know. You could do all that. You can do all that, but never ever think <laughs> for a minute that it's real. No, no. When, when you're living that life, it's, it's anything but real. You've given your life over to a thing that basically you don't control it. It controls you. And Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one, the lamb, the lamb is the only one that can deliver you out of that. You know, I guarantee that I'm right. I, I look. If I were you, I would just pick up a Bible, read it on your own. You know, throw yourself down before the Lord and ask Him, Lord, please. If you're there, Father, I need you. I can't figure my way out of this mess that I made. Lord, help me in Jesus' name. I'll just stay with you, Lord. I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a horrible sinner. They got me trapped and they got, my, they got me by the, you know what? And I need out, Lord. I need to be with you. I, I can't stand this anymore. I see this. It's a sinking ship. I need out, Lord. Please help me. That's better than the sinner's prayer. Begging is good. Go ahead and beg. He loves it. When you know that there is no other way but him, then he loves that. That's what he loves. 
Yeah, he's really, you know, a he, he's, you know, I call him he, but sure, ultimately God is not male or female, you know, these are, you know, these are, these are uh, anthropocentric terms I'm putting on it so that I, so that I can, you know, more easily approach my father, you know, the father of all things, if you will, the source of everything, the actual consciousness that's in me right now is God. The actual discussion we're having is God because it's focused on him. I mean, with what we talked about today, is there any other way with so many people having gone to the dark side with so much corruption and we've looked at the FBI and, you know, how there there may be a godly man at the head of it now, but, you know, how tough it is uh, for any of these people to make change. I know there's good men and women in throughout everything, the media to include it amazingly enough, and Hollywood and everywhere else. I understand that. And I understand the pendulum is going to swing the other way, which which will get a lot of people killed on our way to the light. There will be the end of the duality one day. I believe this is one of the secret meanings of the new Jerusalem. It's the end of duality. The light comes from within us. There's no conflict of light and dark, you see. You know, there is no opposites attracting, repulsing, uniting, disuniting, going to war, going into love, you know, all these opposites. That this part of the thing we're caught up in here is the war of opposites. Anyway, let's get back to the subject at hand. You know, the world is suicidal. Okay. Number one, the remedy for that is, one of the causes of that is that they have us looking at the wrong things all the time. They have us looking at nothing but fear, self-loathing, negativity, and a feeling of overwhelm and helplessness all day, every day, until finally it gets to you, and you really can't cope with it anymore. And it just, everything in your life becomes ruined. And there's no place you can go hide. And there's, you don't know what to do. And, and you know, if your thing is uh, self-medication, well, you, 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 you know, you try. It kind of helps you get through another day, but not really. You know, we need a, a revolution of the spirit within each one of us. And that begins with looking at the Lord, the light, the true light. And pushing everything else aside. And then thinking about the good things in your life and pushing everything else aside, but even if they're silly little things. And, you know, and focusing on that, and then, you know, focusing on beautiful things, and and being disciplined and not letting them take your mind into negativity. Because that's, that's a fantasy world, you know. They're trying to get you to think, oh, it's all shitty, so that you will then make decisions based on that perception that they've given you and you'll fall right into their hands. That's exactly what happens in witchcraft. Now witchcraft is military industrial complex witchcraft. It's it's global witchcraft. It's 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 the very thing that God said not to allow. If you allow that, you'll have totalitarianism and poverty throughout the entire world. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live means thou shalt not allow witches to run your society. This was happening in Jerusalem back in the day. And, uh, you know, the people were replaced. That's right, because, see, the system was that the witches would be vetting the rulers and the, and the, the high priests and the, the various people, not the people, not God. You know, they had hijacked the society. And so they went into captivity. At, they were replaced. They went into a big FEMA camp. Because they turned away from the Lord. If you follow Joel Olstein, you are worshiping the angel of light. You are counted as a Luciferian by the Lord. Oh, I know he talks about God. And who do you think he means? He does not revere the Bible. He says that there's a lot in the Bible he just doesn't agree with. There's a lot of people following him because he is about being in it, being indoctrinated, being hypnotized, being worldly, 
and, and being so positive that you become prosperous, then attribute that to God and Joel himself. This is a person that should not be allowed to be uh, seen because he's somewhat of a sorcerer. I would say with a sorcerer like Joel Olstein, you take him um, and put him in prison. What did he do? Well, it's very powerful when you break, should we allow him to put forth uh, Luciferian doctrine in the, in the guise of, of being with Jesus and being with God when it's all a ruse and a lie? Shouldn't he be called on that? Or at least lose the ability to, to he, if, if he wants to put out Luciferianism, well, my opinion, it shouldn't be put out in this country at all. Well, what about free speech? Well, you know, here's the thing. Luciferianism, communism, and the rest of it is all about deceiving the people and having the people do the thing that would destroy them other than the, what they would do, which would help them, uh, under the guise of giving power to the people perpetrating the crime upon the people of mind control. And since Joel Olstein is all about mind control, should that be allowed in our society? Well, it's a quite open question. If we allow it to, to, to all of that to go on at every level, including the military industrial complex, what's to prevent these people from then using witchcraft through electronic equipment to then control every mind uh, and, 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 and every decision that every per single person makes on the face of the earth? What's to prevent them from taking over every mind? Answer nothing. So if we have no reverence for God, well, have at it, you know. You have, whole, you have whole families of people and generations now that have been here but not lived one day, but lived a fantasy of what was put in their head to live, were told it was a real life, told they were supposed to be appreciative, but they never got to live not one day. They lived someone else's dictates. And they died. They, they had no idea why they lived, no idea what they were doing here. They, they had a couple of kids, and, uh, and they died, never having lived, not one day. Is that what you want? Is that taking care of the people, having them not know who they are? Having them be complete, utter zombies and, you know, sort of doing their duties while waiting for AI and the robots to take over? I mean, is that really it? Well, then, then what I would tell you, sir, is this. Thank God for World War III. Bring it, you know. I hope it nukes every last city on Earth. There'd be an act of humaneness, except for the people, of course, on the outskirts of all the blasts whose skin is ripping off in ribbons and who, 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 who would do anything to die but, but can't. They're so traumatized they don't even know to kill themselves. I suppose that kind of horror in a way, would be more humane than what we have right now. I'm saying in a way, you know, that's from my limited view of thinking. God has his own plan. So I will ultimately trust God because obviously calling for World War III is absurd. I'm being absurd here. Yes, that's something people in the New World Order would think. You know, the, the, the mavens of the New World Order would say, Maybe it's more humane to just kill them off with a world war. You don't think they're thinking that? You don't think they got plans for mega deaths like <laughs> Dr. Strangelove? You don't think there's, there's a, a plan to uh, get the world into the population they want, even if they got to break a few of uh, eggs? You don't think so? Well, you're really naive. The only reason they haven't been able to implement it all is because of your God, the one who made you. That's the answer. Don't you get it? That's the only place you can go. Otherwise, you're going to just sit there and be killed. You know? And, and no one's going to feel sorry for you because in the end, it's like, why didn't you get up out of your chair and, you know, walk to the light or whatever? I mean, why did you just sit there being killed when you had this other solution? As I've told you about it. Why did you sit there? Because I didn't believe him. Why didn't you give it a try? I didn't do anything wrong. Why blame me? I hate everything. You know, oh, well, I've always been of, accused of, you know, believing in pie-in-the-sky things. You know, I've, 
The voice looked up and looked at the stars. Like, one day I'm going to find out what those are. Someone's going to talk to me. Something's going to open up for me. I know that's, you know, like waiting on the seashore and looking up at the stars at night while you're lying there on the sand. And, you know, you're just wondering if anyone's going to come rescue you. I, you know, I remember when I was away at summer camp, I have to say this one more time, I said it before. And um, it was hard, you know, it was like six weeks and... Of, of, and a lot of it was like training. It was like like you know exercising at six in the morning and you know hiking to where you were puking and you know it, it, some of this was it was to toughen the boys up you know. But I remember when when, when you know when it was over, there, a lot of the kids were going home. Uh, you know they had bus buses and trains or whatever they however they were leaving. I think this was up in Sequoia. I'm not sure it's up in you know. The closest town to the camp, which was up in the Redwoods up there, was like uh, Fresno, I think. And uh, and my dad came to get me, and my father came to get me. You know, I was being rescued. And I always loved that that moment we had, you know, where, where, you know, he came to the place. He actually showed up there. You know, and all the other boy, all the other boys, they had to, you know, go on the transportation provided and then they'd see their parents when you know when they got home but mine drove he drove all the way up there and he got me and then we you know we had I think one if I'm not mistaken I'm just trying to remember back I think we had one night in a motel in Fresno I think on our way back to Los Angeles you know but he he really enjoyed driving so he loved that drive Anyway, what was great was, you know, I, I, got, I got rescued out of there. It was, it was, I just wanted to tell him it was really difficult. It was almost like going away to, you know, not quite like, 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 you know, training for the military, but, I mean, it was like, it was kind of on that basis they were trying to have a camp that wasn't just like some recreation thing but some kind of discipline thing for boys to toughen them up, you know, and so we got that for six weeks. So it was really great to get out of there, right? And uh, I often think now with that story, and this is what I didn't say before, but now I'll, I'll take it further. I always look up to the stars. I, mean, I remember how I felt. You know, when he came, it, we, we, it was hard being there. You know, I can't tell, I don't know why it was so hard, but there was a lot of physical exertion and, you know, Seeing we were getting up at odd hours and having to exercise and moving stuff. You know, there was, it just seemed that there was a lot of, and plus being away from home, you know what I mean? Being out of your comfort zone and, you know, but there was a real struggle. And then when my father came there, it was like uh, this relief, I can't tell you. I, I guess it's, um, it was such an elation moment. It was such a, you know, such a wonderful, you know, end to it because, and I wanted to say so many things about how awful it was and then I didn't say anything, you know what I mean? It was like, hey, we're going home, you know, to, to, to whatever happened the last six weeks doesn't matter, whether I was lonely. I remember there were times I would, what did I have? We had these cabins we stayed in and, you know, there were bunk beds in there and I, I'd have, you know, I had a radio, which I cherished, an AM, FM radio, and I had my comic books, you know? So that's how old, however old you are when you have that. And um, I really enjoyed having those comic books and I enjoyed having that radio more than anything. Middle of the night, listening, yeah. Been a long time, been listening around that radio, you know, and here we are with this podcast. But I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. So when I think about looking up to the stars at night, you know, and I think about, you know, the, the end of this and my Lord coming to, my father coming to get me. I know exactly how that feels. You know, he, it's so wonderful. He just can't even describe it. It was so hor awful here, you know. So many unfair, horrible, weird, you know, just days where nothing really happened bad, but the, the vibes were so bad you couldn't do anything. 
that's what was happening here, you know, over and over again. Being tired, you know, can't get done what you want to get done, you know, not able to follow through and people that you know and you meet, you really like them and everything, but then you realize, you know, you can't eat them, you can't take them home with you, you can't put them in a little cage. We're just passing, friends, you know, friends in passing. It's almost like, well, when it, whenever we are landing after this, uh, hey, we'll see you then, you know. I'll see you then, Molly, you know, my old dog. That I'll see whatever happened to you, and we'll see you on the, see you on down the trail. But then this idea of coming to the earth to change it, to put these Satanists out of business, well, that would be a thing to see too, wouldn't it? But to me, I envision home as being not here, something much more real, kind of much more structured, actually, than a kind of whimsical nightmare, because these nightmares we, we live in, they can be altered and changed all the time. And it's not all up like a bad nightmare, you know, it's just like a nightmare meaning very real. Does it's but but it's always the same thing. You have you know, the nightmares that I had for, for most of my life <clears throat> were dreams about people luring me into a place I couldn't get out of and then lying to me about where the exit was. All those of you who know anything about dreams, you, you understand, and various configurations of that. Always the same dream, but with various different characters, different setups, but the same structural dream. Well, it was always, you know, literally, it was always the Satanist luring you in to, 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 to bust you on through to the other side or, or to, to get your soul uh, because that's the business they're in. So naturally, we would be dreaming about such things in various forms, um, or I would, because they were, you know, there was that, that ongoing pursuit. And um, they'd always like, have you be in a building like, you know, you might be in a dental building. And then, you know, you try to find the way out, and then they've, they've hidden your keys, or they've hidden your wallet. And then you know someone knows something, and you go down the hall, and you start having to investigate where your stuff is, so you get your stuff and you can get your keys and then go out to your car and go home. But you can't quite get out of the building. You know, it's that over and over again for me. I don't know about you, but I mean, that's been, well, I haven't had those dreams lately. I mean, you know, lately meaning, I don't know what that means year wise, but that was like the bulk of my life. It was that dream. Not, not lately. No, but for the bulk of my life, that's what it was. i I just want to go with the Lord, you know. I just realized that even in that dream, the way to win the dream and not be traumatized by it, which all the time, I'd wake up traumatized, I'd wake up crying, you know, I'd wake up hurt, right? i wake up, sometimes I'd have scratches on me that I didn't put there, you know, just terrible thing, terrible, terrible, awful thing. I haven't really shared much of that, but it's, it's been, I've been so embarrassed about it, I, I thought, well, if anyone heard the, this stuff, they'd just think this was, this is, I, I need help. Well, anyway, they, they don't really occur much anymore. But if they do, I just know I'm going with the Lord in the dream. You know, in the dream, I just know to sit down. Just that my Lord will, if he wants me to have this experience, fine. But I know to go with him. You know, perhaps my faith needed to be increased, and as my faith was increased, that dream kind of dissolved. But was it my dream, or was it something put in me? It was something beamed at me or put in me by the satanic side through the witchcraft, which is control of the mind, to make you think thoughts that are not yours and make decisions based on thoughts you're having that aren't yours so you never, ever make your own decision or live your own life. Witchcraft 101. If you know that much, you know the whole thing. It's all about mind. Whether you're dealing with the aliens, the UFOs, the occult, the spiritualism, the Ouija board, whatever end of this thing you want to be in, it's all about the same thing. 
Right, control and mind affecting your thoughts so that you make decisions that fall in line with what they want you to decide that have nothing to do with who you are as a human being. Sometimes I want to make decisions people want me to make. I think this idea of a fence here, you know, having a fence on the property, to always wanted one. Um, but now having a motivation to, you know, obviously we have a, a I've, I've lived here for, I don't know how many years, but a lot of years, right? And the way it is here is we live out of the country out in the middle of nowhere. We, you know, dogs are, nobody has fences for their dog. If the dogs run around, you know, they, they hang around too. They don't run anywhere, but I mean, nobody has fences for the, everything's open here. But, um, you know, this house next door is sold. Not next door, it's a ways, you know, it's over in another parcel. But it's sold, and um, we got a call, you know, that lady there, she was trying to walk her dogs, and, and Dasha kept bothering her, you know, making it impossible for her just to have a walk with the dogs, you know, and then said a couple other things that, well, I did what I had to do. Trish didn't really know what to do, but I, I you know, I, I didn't hesitate. I was like, oh, I, I got it. Yeah, they, they come from the city. You know what I mean? They, they know nothing about the country. And um, rather than making friends with Dasha, you know what I mean, and kind of going at it that way, because she's not going to buy them. She's just a puppy, and she likes to, you know, as she starts coming into her own instinct, she's going to, when she feels something is on the property that shouldn't be there, whatever, she'll, she'll, she charges it and barks, and then she backs off. But I know it's, it's still a big German Shepherd, so it's, you know, kind of scary. Look, I understand, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't think she's completely at fault, but the way we handle things here is we don't handle it like that. That's not the way it is in the country. I'm a country person, you know, and I try to be a city slicker, but I just, can you imagine being a city? It just doesn't work, you know. It's, I just draw attention for doing nothing. I, I don't even, I don't even try, you know, but I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, the, the usual thing is you're insane, you're crazy, you know, whatever. It's like, well, then you don't have to see me. I'm out in the country and, you know, so what, you know. You don't have to be offended by my appearance. But, you know, there was, a, there was always that, you know, and I'm like, and I didn't even know if, you know, I realized that I, when I was in the city that I was misplaced there. I didn't belong in the city. You know, people out here in the desert, you know, in, in New Mexico and stuff, they're all very kind of rugged individuals. You know, they all kind of do their own thing. There's a lot of artists out here, and they got all kinds of weird stuff they do, and and how they, there's a cowboy thing going on out here too, you know, big time. And so everybody, there's this whole, like, they only wear cowboy clothes, you know, and they, they've, they've got like, you know, ranches and rodeo things and all kinds of stuff like that going on. Then there's like, you know, the artist kind of people. And there's a guy out here who built a pyramid, you know, out on the Highway 14. He, was, he built a pyramid. Um, you know, you can see it on your way to, oh, if you go through, this area in New Mexico, down by the Galisteo Basin, and you, 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 on your way to a place called Madrid or Madrid, we call it Madrid. You'll see it off to the left. There's a pyramid that's made of metal. Just that's you know, I, I don't know how you could live in that, but I think they try to turn that into an art gallery. But that's the kind of thing you see, or, or barrio life, where everything's kind of run down, and then it's all these people there that are kind of like living in the barrio in a Spanish town in the middle of the. Uh, 1500s or something, and they're just back in time like that, you know. And then there's people's craggy faces of old timers and having all kinds of wrinkles from the sun and very eccentric, right? So nobody would look at anybody and say, oh, you know, you're weird or, oh, you, you know, you stand out. It's like, no, nothing, nobody really bats an eye at any of this stuff, right? And, you know, in those old towns and, and 
you know, Mexico and Spain and other places. You have the dogs, like I, where I take the uh, RV to to uh, to get to work on the diesel engine. There's um, kind of like a barrio there, and the dogs and the chickens and things just kind of wander around in the, in the road, <laughs> and the, and you know, kids and whatnot. It's just it's like that, right? You know, there's nobody's all that. Well, I know they, they, they can get back. You know, I, I don't want any trouble. So, you know, but uh, maybe one day what I'll do is I'll run alpacas or yamas here. Are they the same alpaca and the yama? No, they're not the same. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to just see. It's, 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 a, it's a new situation for us, and, you know, you only get neighbors here every, you know, probably every 10, 15 years. So, you know, people, nothing changes here. You put a house on the market here, it doesn't sell. You know, people are stuck here for all their lives. So they've, they have to give their, their, their houses to their children to, to dispose of. There's, there's no, the, the houses here, the house there that sold was beautiful. I probably should have got it myself. I could have had a big studio, but it... Uh, Straw bale, all custom, There's, you know, tons of stuff, barn, corral, caretaker quarters, separate, separate guest house, separate, big high ceilings, custom windows, really nice. Something that would go for, I don't know, be looked at as a very upscale house. And out here, it went for so low that I realized that where we are, our house is actually worth, even though nicer than it was, it's worth less than it was in the, in 10 years ago. Less than it was 10 years ago. And that thing next door, I think it sold for like seven fifty or something. It was just, you know, with that much acreage and that, and that many buildings on it, just, just the replacement cost alone would have been more than that. It's, it's horrifying what happened to that. But I'm glad that she got a little bit of money out of it, the lady that lived there. Enough to put her in an old folks home in Mexico. She had to go to Mexico to actually, you know, make that money stretch. Yep. Otherwise, she would have been on the street. She just barely eked it, got out of there. Okay, put it this way. I got a guy, you know, he works for me. And we just, you know, we do everything like on a, you know, just, you know, there's a leak in the roof, you know. He'll take care of it and... Uh, I want to. I need more gravel over here, and then he'll show up with a few yards of gravel, and you know, then uh, then I'll I'll pay him. You know what I mean? It's just, it's it's like we don't do contracts, and you know, it's everything's on a handshake out here, right? And um, and yeah, they called him from next door, and you know, said, "Hey, there's a, there's a leak in my roof. Can you go look at it?" And he went over to look at it, and when he got there, um, there was another guy looking at it. And he goes, yeah, well, they like to get bids. And it's just, I said, for a little hole, in the, just a hole in the roof, bids? It's, <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it's fine. You don't want to get it. But I mean, you know, that's just like a, the, it's the difference between the country and the city. You know, that's all I can say. I know you found that amusing, but uh, that's just something I'm dealing with. And, and, you know, I'm determined to get along with everybody. I mean, I'm going to love my neighbor as I love myself. I believe that having good relations with neighbors and fences make good uh, relations with neighbors. That's for sure. But I always wanted that anyway. Well, you know, there's something about keeping the coyotes out of here and, and, and the, bob, the bobcats, could, the, the, the cougars can just jump over any fence. You know, that doesn't bother them. But... You know, just having a little more control of the property and, you know, and making sure that, you know, my dogs aren't... When they used to go next door. See, the woman was really nice. And they they were over there like they own the place. You'd go over to her kitchen over there and there'd be Eli just, just you know, there. Uh, Molly up on her back, up on the porch, you know. I mean, they they hung around the barn and they knew the horses. They had goats too and they knew the chickens and the goats and whatever. <laughs> And they were all just, you know, they would go back and forth between the properties. You know, the, the dogs were just communal dogs. So now, of course, we're not going to have that anymore. That kind of thing is, it, you know, we knew that might happen with a new neighbor. 
But my feeling is I just don't want any... Uh, what I need from the dogs is I need, you know, the guard dog thing in our area. I don't need them to be guarding over there. You know what I mean? And I, and I can't, you know, I want them to be safe as well. So you will see. Well, it's not like we'll even see the, you know, if there's a fence, we won't even see it. You know what I mean? It won't, if you look out the window, you won't see it. It'll, but we'll know it's there. Because it's because it's on acreage, so it's it's behind you know rocks and trees and stuff. You're not going to see it. You know, you know it's there, but you know, and there'll be some entrances and exits and things. I think that's you know uh, having to you know that's just adapting to the to the situation. We're up against also BLM land, and the BLM is right here. What if they decide? Well, I really want you know. Uh, we really need to 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 take some of that land because uh, there's there's some kind of a weird you know uh, a lizard that lives there, and so we want to preserve it. They can do that. We had people here that were surveying for the government, and they they came down from Utah, and they did a whole surveying thing of the, of the water and the plants, and they they're they're keeping track of certain plants and seeing what the water does to it. I let them do it. I let them on the property to, 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 to make some markings and to, you know, so they can kind of look at the way the, 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 the land is changing over time with the changing water. And they want to study that. So I let him in. He said, none of the other neighbors let me do anything. I said, well, you know, it's not like I can keep the government out of here. <laughs> you know? I mean, in a way, we're just renting. I don't need to own the land. I don't need to eat the dirt. I don't, I'm not of the dirt here. You know, when I'm gone, it's, it's gone. It's just like, like, you know, everything I have, I rent. Well, my relation with material objects is great because I know that I'm leaving and it's staying. Because I know that I'm ahead of the game. I know that, you know, uh, I got to figure out where some of the stuff's going to go. Like I, some things that are heirlooms are like my studio. I've got, you know, amazing racks full of hardware in there, different EQs and compressors and all kinds of things, and they have to go to good homes. I know that. They're going to outlive me. Well, maybe people hate analog by then, but I have all analog gear. Is is you know everything is analog in there. You know everything is from like the 1950s. Um, but I know that I'm leaving and it's staying, you know what I mean? So I'm leaving this. So none of this, I feel, I don't own anything here. I'm just, you know, I feel like in a sense, you know, the, the having, you know, had prosperity during times of horror and having, you know, then having horror in times of prosperity, it, it's, um, uh, either one, you know, it's, it doesn't change the equation that we're getting older, the time is precious. What's really important, I think, is is having those good relations, having that feeling of goodwill toward toward you know yourself and others, and um, not feeling you know paranoid and 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 you know distrusting and and how everything is awful. When that happens, it's just they're beaming you. You know, the enemy is working on your mind, and that's what's been happening, and that's what can happen. I mean, there are real conflicts out there, and there is there are things that you might feel strongly about, and you have to rail against. You know, that's that's one thing, but that's not the uh... let's just put it this way: you can have everything in the world, you know, at your beck and call, and if your mind is ruined, if your day is ruined, if your outlook is ruined then it doesn't matter whether you have all these opportunities and things at all. You know, your day is ruined because something's ruining it. I mean, you know, it's like they say health is wealth. Well, mental health, you know, maintaining a realistic outlook on life, you know, not being all horrible but not being all great, you know, like ridiculously great either, will keep you out of the suicidal realm. You know, having your feet on the ground and being appreciative and being... You know, having gratitude, you know, those things are really important. Without those things, we do become suicidal. Without focusing on having some things to look forward to, we do become suicidal. Without something to plug into, but some people are so fraught with negativity, they can't even move. 
let alone get involved with something in town or try to, you know, forge ahead with something new. You know, they can't do it. They just can't move. And it's not their fault. It's that they're getting attacked and pummeled at, through no fault of their own. And they think they think they need to, they think it's their fault. They beat themselves up, which then is like a vicious cycle. And it just keeps on going like that. We can't do that. The way out of it is Philippians 4, 8, you know, whatever things are lovely and good and whatnot, think about those things. Philippians 4, 8, I put that there out on my Facebook page or whatever because I, I knew people needed to look at that. You know, there are things of good report. There are people doing good things. There are uh, beautiful things to look at in the world. There are, there's a lot to be grateful for, but we don't look at it. We're so busy with the negativity. That's all we see. And um, I got to be grateful for the people in my life that are that are, that, are, that I'm working with in a, in a professional manner, that uh, and people that I collaborate with in music, and and all that. Uh, I've been blessed with great people, so I've I'm been blessed with with good results, and that's just it's just amazing to me. Not everything is always good, but it's it's been good results, and and you know we're 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 trying to. I'm still trying to, I haven't given up. I'm still, you know, trying to be a, you know, a good steward, trying to steer the ship through the, you know, tempestuous waters, trying to get through to the, uh, to, to safety and to smooth sailing, knowing it's rough, rough seas right now and that things can change on a dime, knowing that nobody is, nobody really has security anymore. We're all just kind of going day to day, hoping that, that we don't get taken out, you know. It's sad when your own people are, you know, the, the, the perpetrators of the evil against you. It's, it's really sad, especially when you're so mind controlled, you don't even know that. <sighs> Can you imagine not knowing who your enemy is? Can you imagine that? Thinking everything is fine while you're, while you're being reamed. Um, it's gotta be awful. It's got to be causing a lot of people to get on medication, a lot of people to become, become suicidal, a lot of a lot of tragic things in our society, a lot of people to become violent because the pressure's too much on them and they react. And um, you know we're seeing more and more of that, and it's 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 just, it's just terrible. I'm trying to address it today, folks. Give me some credit for it. Um, I know how how terrifying the world is and how what 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 dire straits we're in. At the same time, I've got to get up and I've got to be proactive. I've got to create something. I've got to maintain things that I do own and things I have to, 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 to I can't just let everything go and say, oh, it all sucks. You know, if, if I have to show some kind of decorum, show some kind of manners, show some kind of uh, self-discipline in order to, 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 uh, you know, that means I got to focus on some positive things, you know, or if I didn't, then I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't, you know, I've, there's opportunities to come along. I'd say, well, the hell, the heck with everything. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to lift a finger anymore because the odds are all stacked against me anyway. Why should I try? Well, okay. So the remedy for that is find something else to do then that you might like to do. I don't care if it's, you know, flying a kite. I mean, find something you like to do that's something you haven't done. Something that will break the rut. You know, take a spinning class or yoga or something. Oh, yoga is evil. Okay, well, find something else then. Take a cooking class. You know, I'm always amazed when I watch people then they're involved in their hobbies and things how that's, they're really into it. And I'm really envious of that. I really love that. You know, a little bit of that wouldn't be so bad for people like us who are taking everything like, you know, to tend to look at all the conspiracies and all the awful things of the world, you know. It's one thing to be prepared for those things, but it's another thing to miss all the good things God is doing, to miss the forest for the trees. If you're bummed out, I know you're doing it wrong. If you're bummed out, 99% of the time, it's coming from someone else or something else out there. 
It's not your thoughts. When uh, I looked up on the, the, the base that I got from, you know, from, uh, I don't know where I got it from, eBay or something, it uh, looked like it hadn't been used, although it's a satin finish. It's not bright gloss like the other Gibson I have. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's a real working base. It's a real rock, hardcore, loud base. And, but it had this bridge on it by this company called Babish. Babish, B-A-B-I-C-Z. And because um, I wondered why that, like, you could hit a note like a high E or something, and it would just stay there. It would just keep playing until you were, you know, indefinitely. And they say it's that that bridge that was put in called a, called a uh, I forget what they call that bridge. But it did have one custom piece to it, that bridge. So I, you know, it's like a $150 bridge. I, I got that uh, for free, basically. I mean, I got the thing at a good price. Someone had it, they set it up and got it going, and they didn't ever use it. So it's my benefit, and I want to use that on this track, but I don't know if I've, I, I don't know, folks. I'm going to have to try to get some rest and then come back to it and, and see if I can, I can get in there. And it's hard, you know, it's hard. You know, once I get it done, I'm going to feel better about it. Well, making recordings or recording your music is a very noble thing to do, and I think that, uh, you know, if that's your particular hobby or whatever you're doing, it's, it's great. It's going to help you in life. Or whether it be, you know, surfing or whether it be, you know, watching the stars or watching the birds or whatever it is. But, I mean, there's got to be something. Right? Life is bittersweet, folks. You're always going to have someone dying, sick, hurting, starving, being in an accident trying to recover, <clears throat> you're always going to have tragedies. And yet there's always going to be good things too. And I, I know the balance has been weighted like 80% to the dark side. It won't be, for, help is coming. The pendulum is swinging the other way. Yes, it looks very dangerous out there. We must trust the Lord. You know what, World War III? I don't either. Let's trust the Lord. I mean, but it's, pretty much almost breaking out, and the talks are breaking down in Syria. So, the idea that we're in a proxy war with Russia is insane. And uh, all their Russia is saying is, we got to get back to the negotiating table, or this thing could develop into a world war. It'd be world war with the United States, but starting in Syria. And, you know, that prophecy about um, Damascus being leveled, uh, absolute possibility right now, that that prophecy will be fulfilled. And that prophecy is left, that's an end times prophecy. That's like, like you know, the, the fall of Babylon. It's almost, it's on that level. So I, I'm thinking if, there, there, if that happens, there is something, I think you watch the rest of it, the rest of it uh, go too. Well, we already have the white horse. We already have the pale horse. We've got the red horse. I mean, they're running, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the thing is, it's a really tough time right now. Uh, look, for you human beings who come to this earth, this is the Super Bowl. You know, you're on the field right now. This is the toughest competition you're ever going to find. You know, you have to be special enough to even be chosen to do this. So you're doing it. But recognize that, you know, you're going to pull yourself out of the doldrums right now. Not so much for yourself, but because of because God. You're a child of the Most High God. And it is such, you're here, he's given you all this to kind of enjoy, you know, and, and yet you're a witness of the horrors of fallen man and what what satanic man will do you know that's really narcissistic man that's really um, you know uh, 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 blind man 
lost man. But, you know, you do it the world's way, and you get all this stuff, and then you realize, oh my God, what have I done? Well, you repent. You repent, even if it's 90 years old. You know, you, you, you realize you're not God, and you cannot affect the outcome, and it's not about you anyway. So you go to the light, you go to the Lord. That's just part of the death experience. You don't reject that God on the deathbed. That's, that's not a, that is not a wise move, folks, not at all. And rather, you encourage someone on their deathbed to go to the Lord because that's where there's peace. And, and that goes for everyone, no matter where they're at. Okay. And now we've, we've definitely we've done a good run here. I, I hope that I've been helpful in this. I hope you've enjoyed my anecdotes about um, the one about my father coming to get me. That was just, I can't put it into words how, how great it was to be, to, that he would drive me out of that place. Well, I have, again, something about the Lord doing the same thing, that he's going to one day drive me out of here or he's going to do something. He's going to show up. So one day my life's going to change. I don't know when. I Call me a fool that's sitting on the side of the cliff waiting for my ship to sail by and take me, like Jimi Hendrix said, you know, but it really didn't have to stop. It just kept on going. Yep, most of the ships just keep on going, Jimi Hendrix, but there's going to be one of them one day that's going to have my name on it. And I just got to keep hoping for that. I don't just want to get some, you know, I was quoting a song about Jimi Hendrix called Castles made of sand and you know it's got good wisdom in it but I'm, I'm I still haven't found what I'm looking for to quote another song and I just I really have I'm, I'm really still waiting on my lord I'm still waiting since a child to see you're a fool you're waiting all that time I'm you're waiting for Godot and I'm, I'm not going to go there that's a very cynical play well, Beckett's waiting for Godot and I'm not going to do it I'm going to wait for Godot I'm going to wait, even if I have to wait, as I suspect, unto my deathbed, I will wait, and then I will continue keeping my eyes, watching, anticipating, and waiting. I know it's not going to be something outside of myself. It's going to be coming from within. I understand that. Somehow now I feel there's hope again, and I'm hoping you feel that too. And let's, let's shake this crap off. It's not from us anyway. They're doing it to everybody. Well, they really are. I mean, we really have withstood tremendous evil, even invisibly while nothing is happening. The sun's still up in the sky, blue sky, uh, people working over here, doing things. I'm, you know, my dogs are happy, and Trish seems to be happy. Everybody seems... And you go, well, so what's wrong in your life? I don't know. I feel like it's like it, it's this horrible thing, and it's, it's this beam weapon that's coming at you. I, I can't prove that, but I just, it's got to be something like that. Okay. I'll see you next time.